idea why I was counting there. I just felt the need to count to five on my fingers, because fingers are such magic little things, aren't they? They allow us to take the inspirations that you give us, Mr. Muse or Mrs. Muse. Probably Mrs. Muse, I don't really know. Ms. Miss, Mr. Sir Muse. They allow us to take the inspirations that you give us and turn them into words. <laughs> so, I just finished recording the audiobook for Suicide Station. You remember that book. Of course you do. Um, and, uh, I was, I was really worried, really nervous about recording my first audio, not, I was rec really nervous to record the audiobook for my first book. That doesn't make any sense. Okay, this was the first time I ever got to record my own book because I've been so busy as a narrator that I haven't had the chance, and I finally did. And I was nervous. The first day that I sat out to, to start recording that first chapter, I thought, oh my God, what if, I'm re what if I record this and I realize that it sucks? Now that was just, that was in the back of my head. Because you know and I know and everybody knows that I have more confidence than that in my work. But still at the same time, there was just this little, like this little devil on my shoulder going, <laughs> what if it sucks? What are you going to do if you get in the middle of the book and you want to barf? You cannot do it anymore. I don't know why the devil on my shoulder sounds like that, but... Uh... So, I dove in and I started recording and lo and behold, we did something good. We made something good. And I, I enjoyed it. I had so much fun recording it. And uh, it was it was fascinating. It took me significantly less time to record that book than it does other books because, well, they're my words. So I, I know my voice. I know how I write and how I speak. But um, I was incredibly pleased with how it turned out and that... So much of, of the doubt that goes on in my head and all artists' head about their work, because we all doubt. We all doubt ourselves at one point or another, and, it, and it's, it's infuriating and it's exhausting, but we do it. We're our worst critics. We beat ourselves up constantly. And sometimes, sometimes we beat ourselves up in in hopes of improving of, of of kind of pushing ourselves forward because we have to constantly be improving if you're not improving every day then you're doing this wrong but uh, it's one thing right listen <laughs> it's one thing to go back to your book and and reread it and go oh yeah that's good right it's another thing to read it out loud, especially to record it as an audiobook. Because in a, as an audiobook, you've got to bring this thing to life. And it has to tell a story, an engaging story, and it has to do so in such a way that it is enjoyable to hear. And I found, guess what, that Suicide Station did those things and did them well. And and it came at a really important time because uh, there's there's just so much negativity out there right now. And as artists, we glom on to that negativity and, and, and we struggle with, the, with preventing to perpetuate that negativity. And when we do that, it... it, it turns inward and the negativity gets pointed in on our work and we start to doubt ourselves and so right when I, I, I was going through something like that I, I, I recorded the audiobook for Suicide Station and 
I realized I had done something good. And interestingly enough, during the process of recording Suicide Station, I had also did a, a public reading of Hell's Muse. And after that reading of Hell's Muse, I said to myself, I did that. I wrote that. And I was so proud. And so often we are taught by society and those that love us and those that raise us that pride is a bad thing. But we have to have some level of pride in our work. Otherwise, why would we do it? And yeah, I'm, I'm proud of, of... You and I, Muse, we have written 34 books. Most people out there have write a book on their bucket list and they don't do it. And you and I have written 34 of them. And who knows how many more we're going to write. And there's nothing wrong as an artist in stepping back and looking at your canon of work and being proud. Sometimes I realize that we are inherently our own worst critics. But at the same time, we also have to be our biggest fans. Because it's, a, it's an ugly world out there. And there are going to be times when you feel like you have no fans. You are, I'm talking to you, Muse. I know you've got fans. You've got a big one right here. Woo! But as artists, we, it's, it's a wall that we constantly have to climb. And why would you want to exist in the realm of artistry without some semblance of pride in your work and without, at least at some point, being your biggest fan of your own work. If you're not your biggest fan, then what do you have in you to spurn you forward? <laughs> spurn. Not spurn you forward, spur you forward. They spurn you backwards. That's exactly what all of this... Somebody's trying to call me. I'm not going to answer the phone because I'm having a conversation with my muse. So anyway, it's the buzz, buzz, buzzing in my head. Ooh. Muse, did you and I just come up with a story? I think we did. I got to remember that. Note to self, remember that. Buzz, buzz, buzzing in my head. See, that's how, this, that's how this works with the muse. Happy accidents. Um, anyway, yeah. You gotta be your own fan. Be your biggest fan. Be your worst critic and your biggest fan at all times. They balance each other out. And, and, and they keep you honest. There's no way, there's absolutely no way, as an artist, you are going to be able to stop being your biggest critic. That's inherent in us. At the same time, make sure that you are your biggest fan. Now, you got to be careful with that, of course. Don't let being your biggest fan feed your ego. Because an oversized ego leads to very detrimental behavior. It's a fine line. Everything's a fine line. So anyway, I'm going to start recording all of my books on audio, in audio, as audiobooks. Because, number one, it's, a, it's another income stream. But you know, I, I enjoy, I thoroughly enjoy it. And number two, it, it serves as a nice reminder that you did something worth presenting to the public. I ramble on. I'm going to end now, my muse. My muse, my best friend.
You are my best friend. Are you my best friend? If you were my best friend, you would bring me a bagel with a sh with little schmear on it right now. Is that asking too much? Bagel and some schmear? Ah. <laughs>